Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use Metasploit. So by the end of this video, you guys should have a basic understanding of how Metasploit works and operates. So we're going to be covering some commands, how to install it, and we're going to be doing some live exploiting. So that's going to be really fun. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And thank you guys very, very much for 1,000 subscribers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to log into my Linux server. All right. And once you guys are in your Linux server, we're going to need to install Metasploit. So to do this here, if you are on Kali or Parrot, you can just type sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade. So what this will do is this is going to update your package lists and it's going to upgrade all of your installed packages. Now this is good practice to do it. I'm not going to do it right now because I already did it a week ago and it does take a really long time. So just be patient with that. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is if, of course, once again, you're in Kali or Parrot, you can type sudo apt install and metasploit. There we go. Now I am on Ubuntu, so things are going to be a little bit different for me. So if you guys are on Ubuntu like me, we can go ahead and we can type sudo snap install metasploit dash framework. We'll go ahead and press enter. And now this should take a second, but it will install. All right, and as soon as we're ready, we can go ahead and type sudo and it would say msf console. Oops, console, there we go. And what it's gonna do is it's going to start Metasploit. All right, and as soon as you see something kind of like this, you should be in Metasploit. So now one thing that's really cool about Metasploit is every time you relaunch, this image here will change. So that's, really, that's what I find really cool about it. I know, it's a nice little touch. So let's go ahead and we'll clear the screen once again. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some fun stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another command prompt and log into my server again. And we're going to network scan with Nmap our target device. So once you have your virtual machine running, you can go ahead and scan that. All right. And once you've got your other terminal window ready, we can go ahead and start. So if you were on Kali and Parrot, you can just go ahead and up and go into the corner and just right click and press new window. But I'm on Windows for now, so I have to open up another terminal and log in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type sudo and map, and then our target machine's IP address. So for me, it's 192.168.12.149. Now, if you didn't know the IP, we would do slash 24. And this, what it would do here is it will scan the whole entire network for every device. Now, I'm not going to do that because I know which one it is. But we'll go ahead and we'll press enter. And we'll enter our pseudo password once more. And we can see here, we've got a lot of different ports here. We've got FTP, SSH, Telnet. We've got a lot of cool stuff here. So, so if you do want to exploit something, we're going to need to have the service version. Now, it's not necessary to have the service version, but it's very useful. Because maybe version 10 of FTP is vulnerable to an exploit, or maybe version 8 is not. Something kind of like that is the case. So this actually really does help out a lot if you do do it. Okay, so to this here, we can type sudo, and we can do nmap, then we'll do dash sv for service version, and we'll do the IP of the machine again. Nine, and we'll go ahead and press enter. And now in just a couple minutes, it should go ahead and try to get a service version. So now the service version here does take quite a bit of time. All right, and after that, we can go ahead and we can see it's found quite a bit. So we have VSFPTV. That, that could be something here that we can exploit. So I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, we got some ISC, we got some MySQL. So just by looking at these here, we can see we got a lot of different things. Like the My, MySQL here, maybe that's, maybe that's vulnerable to a SQL injection. Or maybe you can bug the FTP to get around you know, restrictions. So we got a lot of cool things here. See, we got the Mac, and we've got some, we got some info about the device here. All right, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and let's keep this in mind. We'll go ahead and close that. And once again, back here on Metasploit, why don't we go ahead and let's look through some things. So we're gonna run through some of these commands here. So the first command we've got here is the search command. So this is going to search for an exploit. So we can type search. And why don't we do 
the VSFTPD. That is a mouthful. Go ahead and press enter. And it looks like we have a back door here. All right, that's pretty cool. So we got tool. So we can see here it's using port 21 and it needs to have the IP, the R host, the remote host. So you can check here, see we've got, got the name, you got some, what the value is, you got if it's required or not, and you got the description. We can see it is a supported module and we've got some pretty good details about that. All right, and once again, we're going to search and we're gonna use VSFTPD. And why don't we go ahead and use the back door here. So we'll type use, and we use use number one. So we're saying we're using the exploit that is numbered one. Go ahead and press enter. Okay, and we don't have any payload configured. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to type set and payload, and this will be, I guess well, why don't we just use the default. So we can type cmd slash unix slash interact. So what this is doing here is it's going, it's saying, we're going to set the payload here to the one that's here the under CMD, Unix, and Interact. Now, of course, it's very obvious. So we'll hit enter. And now we should see something like this. So we'll go ahead and clear the screen. And let's look at the options again. We'll type options. And we are going to need the R hosts. So we can once again type set and the remote hosts and to the machine's IP. 149, there we go. Oh, oops, our hosts. Each. There we go. Now we clear the screen and we can type options. Very cool. Okay, now this last command here is probably the most important command and it's just simply exploit. Now, typing run also works as well, but it just depends on the module. So we'll go ahead and press enter. Now, if you guys see anything that's blue, that's just a, generally a message. Usually green means something's good. So right now it has found a shell and it looks like it has opened up a session. That's very good. Now, if there's anything that's red, generally that's an error. So go ahead and recheck your options, see what you put in correct. Now we can, let's go ahead and check to see if we are in the shell. So we can go type and say, who am I? And we are now root. Now, there we go. We have a reversed shell into our machine. So we'll go ahead and we'll abort. Now let's go look at another command here. Now this is just called back. This will get get out of the module that we're using. So we can also check right here where it says, this is exploit and this is unix slash ftp. So we are using a exploit and this is the type that we're using here. So if we actually copy this here, we can type use an exploit slash, let me paste that in. And once again, we're back in here. So that's just something really cool that you can do, just in case you forget which module you're using. And we'll just go back again. And we'll clear our screen. Okay, so another command we can do here is show. We'll just press enter. Now we need to give some parameters. So why don't we just go ahead and we'll just do show all. How about that? So I'll clear, and we'll do show all. Now these here are all of the modules that Metasploit has. So we have some framework plugins. Oh, let's scroll up a bit. Yeah, we got some exploits. They got a whole bunch of stuff here. Yeah, these are post exploits. So these are, you know, exploits that you want to use after. But these here are just kind of just help you show and view a list of exploits. So maybe one day you're just scrolling and, oh, hey, this Firefox one looks really cool. Let's try to try this one out. Then you fire up your virtual machine and you know you try it out. Something really cool. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I know it's a little bit late on my 1,000 subscriber special, but hey, I mean we're here eventually. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.